Where's my man, Ben? All right, uh, good afternoon. In the uh, respect of your time, I'm going to start exactly at 2 o'clock. And let me suggest that uh, we have been hurried, we've been deliberate. And we ran hard after the first call came in at 9.40 p.m. that there was a robbery in our city. And I can tell you that to say that this case is complicated is an understatement. I can tell you from the inception that we used every resource of our police department. Our uh, evidence technician and our crime labs was at the scene almost immediately and continued to work through the weekend and they still continually to work very hard today to analyze evidence, video, locations, technology that's way over my head. I can tell you that our special operations people did not sleep. Those are our covert and undercover people. We, we put them to a challenge that they've never seen before, and they came through with flying colors. Our tactical strike teams, combed the area on our side of the city on tiremen, and they were invaluable and they continue to be today. And our detectives, they came together as one and worked as hard as they could work. I can also tell you that the community stood tall. We got many uh, tips that were valuable. We had to vet a lot of information that was not so useful, but that goes with a large investigation. I can tell you that our faith-based community backed us 100%. Our imam here, one year ago, we were at the library on a 9-11 commemoration. I called him immediately, thank you for what you did to deal with the family at their time of grief. And as helpful and as grieving as the family could be, they helped us in <clears throat> countless ways that we're not going to get into today. Uh, the first thing I'm going to tell you is that the three robberies in our city were acts of random violence. It wouldn't matter who the subjects encountered, they were going to get robbed and or hurt that night. I can tell you that on Friday, the 6th of uh, September, between 9.40 and 9.53 p.m., three people were robbed. The first one was at Stedman and Moross. A lady was assaulted and robbed of her purse. That was the first one at 9.40. Moments later, we get the call. Somewhere about 9.52 p.m. at Bingham and Moross, that's where our second victim encounter was encountered in her car, totally innocent, pulling up at the family home, and was ultimately fatally shot, and her purse was taken. The third victim, was on Jonathan near Moross, who got in the perp's way and they fired shots at him, a shot at him. Uh, the perpetrators ran north and subsequent to that, uh, they ran north on Jonathan towards Tyerman. Our responding officers combed the neighborhood and this is the only thing they were able to come up with first a shadow of a car. After that, we developed some more information. We have a second picture here. And again, this is highly complicated. I'm not trying to be evasive. There's just some things I can't tell you. But I can tell you that they developed uh, another picture from more valuable um, video and we were able to get that car. Let's go on, Ben. Uh, to date, we did, in fact, uh, initially arrest four people, and I'm going to go over the timeline in a moment. Three are in custody because they were deemed responsible for this crime. Um, we have a male, 17 years old. We have two juveniles, one 
13 and one 14 years old. And with the juveniles, let me tell you that from a legal and criminal perspective, that put a horrible timeline on us. We could not disclose to the media information that we were trying to vet and investigate, but it's very fragile. The timelines are fra fragile and the law is clear. So we have a very short window to put our case together and to bring juveniles to the juvenile court. I can tell you that uh, Prosecutor Kim Worthy was notified of this case early on and she directed us all the way through it with her entire team and we were going to make sure that uh, we did things by the numbers. Equally important, I can tell you that uh, we didn't want anyone hurt. We did not want anyone hurt. And based on the amount of work we had done, I was reasonably satisfied that we had mitigated the threat by these three individuals because we knew where they were and we kept them in check. So I just want to make sure that the community understands that in spite of the fact that it took us three days to make disclosures, we knew who they were and we were working those cases very actively. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, next, please. Okay, so when you look at this, uh, okay, let me quickly uh, point out that on many of the tips we got from the community, the uh, one case where the purse was stolen and the young lady was fatally shot, we recovered a purse uh, north of our city in Detroit, and again, uh, there was additional video that was gleaned in that neighborhood, and that'll all be presented in court. Next, please. Okay, I just want to be accurate. I typically don't read these or look at them, but I'm going to have to do that today. All right, the screen you're looking at indicates a traffic stop in the city of Detroit that happened on Saturday 9-7 at approximately 4.30 p.m. That was the first break in the case. There was a vehicle spotted by a Detroit motor officer that ran a red light. And our communications that we now have in place, our undercover people that were working that area, uh, heard the run come out and they went to the area. There was a car crash there at Grand River and Evergreen involving the car that we wanted. Subjects in the car did try to attempt to run. Our officers were able to track them down and arrest them. I can tell you that the car they hit unfortunately was totaled, but the saving grace was that the two innocent people in that car were not injured at all. They walked away from the car. Uh, that was the biggest break that we got in the case at that point in time. Uh, that person is a 17-year-old, and he'll be going to court, and you'll be notified when that happens. Uh, there was a passenger in the car that was investigated and at this time released, but that investigation is continuing. Next, please. On 9-9, and again, we've developed a lot of information over the last several days. We did, in fact, identify a young man who was 14 years old. Ultimately, after a lot of work, a lot of work, uh, we, we made an arrest at Narden Park at 5.30 in the afternoon. Uh, the incident was non-eventful. Uh, there was two people taken into custody as, at that time. One was armed with a weapon. However, it wasn't the 14-year-old, and the 14-year-old is now uh, being held in connection with the fatal shooting. Next, please. You've heard me say a million times that crime knows no borders. I can tell you that when it's all said and done, uh, these three individuals are going to be looked at throughout the region for other crime and uh, other cities. We've cooperated with everyone in our region. In addition to the uh, Wayne County prosecutor, we've dealt with the uh, U.S. Marshals and got great support from them. Detroit Police has been very instrumental. Oak Park Police, 
uh, Detroit Public School Police Department, ATF, and again, let me thank the media because you kept asking for uh, tips and the tips came in. So I'm very grateful for the media and for the uh, citizens that uh, gave us tips. Next, please. Is that it? All right, you know, um, among some of the tips we got and inquiries we got, um, there was some belief or thought that maybe these three victims had something to do with this incident. I want to emphasize. They were purely victims. It wasn't because they had a fight or a spat with anyone. It had absolutely nothing to do with lifestyles, arguments at work. They were totally random acts of violence in our city. And that's the way this case is going to be treated. And there's a few questions that I may answer. I'll open it up to questions. On the traffic stop, there was two people in that car. Well, if you're, you want to count them, there's five total that were taken into custody on this. Uh, two at the traffic stop. And again, I've been saturated with information, and I believe I was told that there was two arrested at Arden Park with the second person armed with some type of weapon not related to this case. So a total of five, but only three were related to this case. Okay? I just want to be clear because there's so much inaccurate or partial information out here. Hey, there was a report about one of the suspects wearing a tether, is that correct? That's correct, and uh, although it didn't help us to locate him, it helped us track the movements after we got him. So uh, I would say that without getting into it, that's gonna prove to be very valuable, and it might interest you to know that uh, because we take a zero uh, tolerance policy to shoplifters in our city because it was really plaguing us at one time. He got arrested here in the city of Dearborn for shoplifting him and the 13 year old and we had contact with them on that. So she, she, uh, there's been a rumor saying that it has nothing to do with the robbery and it's, it's a criminal case and she's been killed due to certain issues related to family. Is that true? Is that Madam Diva Madam Diva, I'm glad you asked me that. That's precisely what people were calling and asking. That is absolutely false. Absolutely false. This was a random act of violence by three people that had committed similar crimes around our region, not our city, but our region. And I'm not at liberty to go any further with that because those cases belong to other people. And you let our people know that that is absolutely false. She was an innocent victim. It was a random crime, and if I were in that car, or any of you were in that car, the same thing would have happened to you. It has nothing to do with anything. Chief, help us understand, if someone's wearing a tether, how did you not tell them to track that person down? We'd have to know that ahead of time, sir. We did not know that until later. These three, could they be connected to an incident that I could say it's possible. I'd have to double check. I'm gonna let Detroit do their own investigation, but I will say this. These three are responsible for regional crime. You say where the three are right now, where they're being housed, and the relationship between the three? The relationship is just neighborhood acquaintances. Um, I can tell you that two are probably in the youth home, Lincoln Center, right now, and one is in jail right now. We're going to let you know the court dates that are coming, and quite honestly, because of all the information that flooded out last night, we had to rush this, and not only did we have to rush this disclosure, but we had to rush the work we were doing on the other end so that we could meet the critical timelines in court. But I want to reemphasize again that the public safety was not jeopardized because our teams were on top of this. This morning there was a uh, robbery in Indiana and uh, Ross. Can you uh, say anything about that? 
I can only tell you we're actively pursuing it. Chief, can you say um, two, two questions? The weapon has been recovered, and uh, if you think this is gang related. Um, gang related, possibly. They hang out together. Um, I'm not going to go into any of the evidence that's been uh, recovered at this time, but I can tell you we've taken scores of evidence that will help uh, establish our case. Case is ongoing. We've got enough to get the warrants and get them charged, but I can tell you none of our detectives are taking a day off tomorrow. We've got a lot of work to do, and uh, I'm not going to get into any of the evidence. Seventeen, ma'am. Seventeen. Chief, have you talked to the victim's family at all since you made these arrests? I have. And I've talked to the victim's family all through the weekend and today as well. And, and can you tell us what, what basically, what message did you, did you give them? I mean, how did you I'm not going to get into what I told them. I'm just going to say that I uh, assured them we would do everything we could to bring their uh, responsible to justice and we did and uh, I can say that in spite of the grief that they were feeling as helpful as they needed to be to our department they have been we know who the shooter is I'm gonna wait for for the court documents to clear they haven't cleared yet it'll become a record soon but I'm gonna tell you that we're confident that we know who the shooter is <clears throat> question is what goes through your mind when you hear that they're 13 and 14 years of age the kids I can tell you that I view it a tragedy it's a tragedy for their families um, I've actually talked to one of their parents and uh, it's just unfortunate but we have an obligation to hold them accountable and if you really want to know what goes through my mind I think we all own failures when kids get on the wrong track like this. So it's, it's everybody, it's society's failure in my view. I think uh, they did try to escape the motor officer but ended up in a crash a short, di a, a short distance away and because our officers have been deployed all over the region in pursuit of information on this case. They were reasonably close. They were able to assist, and they closed in and made an arrest. Chief, just to clarify one more time, these three individuals who you have in custody are all from the city of Detroit, or some are from They're all from the city of Detroit. We have some very good officers working in this building, and they're very, they're, they're very dedicated. And I told you that we had somehow mitigated the public safety threat. Uh, our officers knew basically where they were at. Um, most of the time they had an eye on them. And I can tell you that it was with great tactical design that we did not want to harm our officers or harm the kids being arrested. So we went through great pains to ensure that when we took them into custody, we could do it safely, both for our men and women, and for the community, and for these young people involved with this. And, um, I don't know about the second part of your question, whether they cover up or not. Uh, they were, yeah, they were covered. I, I think that's a, a matter of record. They were covered. I can tell you that in our city alone, between 9.40 and 9.53 p.m., they committed three armed robberies and or an assault.
I have I, I have no idea on that right now. I don't have that information. And if I did have it, I'm not sure I would answer the question, but I don't have that information. That's a great question, a great series of questions. I just don't know that right now. Anything else? Are we good? <laughs> well, yeah, th this is this is their family and uh They're asking, does anyone want to make a statement? No. No. They. It's yeah. like a police investigation, and uh, we believe they're going to do the justice. And uh, uh, as far as we know, if you're can we have you go up to the police, can we have you on mic? Can, can we have you on mic? It's your call. I don't have anything else. Just, just what you were just saying. Just what you were just saying. Yeah. All right. Yeah, if you just want to say what you said, but he's not taking any questions because he doesn't want any questions, right? Okay. Yeah, my name is Imam Hushamar I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're good. Thank you, Chief. Uh, my name is Imam Hushamar Hussaini. I'm the director of Karbala Islamic Center in Dearborn, Michigan. And uh, this is her, her brother. I am uh, Ali Al Janabi, the brothers of the victim, Saja Al Janabi. Actually, all what I want to say to thank the police of Dearborn for their fast, quick uh, investigation, and they captured the criminals, and we trust their investigation, and we're looking forward for the uh, punishment of the criminals, and we hope that this kind of criminal won't happen anymore in Dearborn because it is really, uh, it's bad for the whole community and uh, in God will, working as a community and, and, and faith base and law enforcement, uh, these things won't happen anymore because it's no good for nobody. Especially for a family who suffered in, in Iraq a lot mm. Her father been murdered in Iraq, her uncle been murdered in Iraq, and she got murdered here. It's very pity, very sorry. Yeah, I just would like to thank Dearborn Police, the hard work. I mean, they only have one evidence, the white car they found in Detroit, and they gather all the information. I really appreciate what they did to us. I would thank everybody who helped and come up with the good information, the videotape, and all that. I mean, it is what it is. You can't stop it, but hopefully soon they're going to be in jail and find justice for my sister. Thank, Thank you, Chief. Thank you. God bless you. Thanks. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, Mom, Thank you. Could you just spell your name for us, please? Sorry? Spell, spell your name for us, please. Uh, Imam, I-M-A-M, Husham, H-U-S-H-A-M, al Husseini A-L, H-U-S-A-I-N-Y. Okay, that's it. Let me again say to the media, thank you for uh, putting out what you put out all weekend long, and we couldn't have done it without you, so thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, like I said earlier, we do have the media packets up here. If you do want any of this electronically, please contact me. I uh, will send it out via email uh, to you immediately following the uh, press conference.